Hey crocheters, in this video we are going to be making this chubby bunny. So this is a beginner pattern. We're going to take everything really, really slowly in the beginning. Um, honestly, not very complex stitches. Everything's going to be pretty basic, but we're just walking through every step of the process so that um, you can make it, you can learn from this. We're also going to be learning how to read a pattern while doing this. So I hope you guys enjoy the chubby bunny tutorial and I'll see you in a second. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the materials that we're going to need for this project. You can find this PDF um, in the links below, so you can print it off if you need. But the first thing we're gonna need is we're going to need about 100 yards of Bernat blanket yarn, super bulky. So that yarn looks like this. Um, in the picture, I'm actually showing a 200 yard ball. Um, but you only need a 100 yard, which is kind of smaller. You're going to need about one yard of white, medium weight yarn, which will be the highlights in the eyes, and then three yards of the black medium weight yarn, which we'll use to make the eyes and to embroider on the nose. As far as hooks go, you're going to need an eight millimeter hook for crocheting into the Bernat blanket yarn and you're going to need a 3.5 millimeter hook for crocheting into the medium weight yarn. The 5.5 millimeter hook is optional. You can either use that or a yarn needle um, when it comes to attaching the ears and the tail to the project. Additional things you're going to need, at least a 16 ounce bag of fiber fill, um, a yarn needle uh, for sewing on the eyes and embroidering on the nose, and one pair of very cheap nylons. I get mine at the dollar store. Um, the cheaper they are, the easier they stuff. And one pair of scissors just for trimming and cutting in general. If you're pretty new, this is, we're just gonna cover some of the basics when it comes to crocheting. So crocheting works essentially by making a bunch of slip knots. And so we always start off with some form of a slip knot. If you're going to do a chain, you just make a slip knot and insert your hook. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through, making a slip knot, yarn over, oops, yarn over, pull through, and you just make a series of slip knots, which allows it to come undone very, very easily. Um, so, but, but how you hold your hook and how you use your, your other hand for tensioning is completely up to you. There are a couple of different grips, um, that people use. And so I use, I use the knife grip, which means I hold it more like you would hold, um, a, a knife, a butter knife or a steak knife. <clears throat> That's the grip that I use. Some people hold it like a pencil, and so they they hold it like this, kind of upward. Um, clearly this is not how I do it because it's really hard for me. Um, but they, they use it like, they hold it like a pencil. Um, and probably people who do the pencil grip will tell me exactly why what I just did was really, really bad because I don't know how to do that. Um, and then when it comes to how people hold You know, because I'm, I'm right-handed, I crochet with my right hand and then I hold with my left. And so what I do is I have my yarn, I have it go over my pinky and then around to my, to my index finger. And I hold it just kind of lower here. And what, what having it around these two fingers does is it helps me to regulate tension with my pinky. So if it's slipping too much, I can hold on to it tighter. Um, whereas if it was just just over like one finger, there is no tension. You you have to grip it somehow. So some people some people do it just over their their index finger, and they just crochet like this. 
Um, you'll find a lot of crocheters, they just do it however they were taught. And so, I mean, you'll even see some people will wrap it around like their index finger just multiple times like this. So this is, it's really up to you and, and kind of how you like to, what feels natural. And honestly, if you're beginning, nothing's gonna feel natural. It's all gonna feel kind of weird. Um, but but in, in this um, crochet along tutorial, you're going to see that, that I, that this is how I hold my yarn. Um, and, and also, this is an important bit, is that to make your stitches, you need to wrap the yarn around your hook or wrap your hook around your yarn. Either one is fine. It's important to go around to, you know, to wrap this way rather than to just grab this way. Why that is important is because if you grab this way, it doesn't allow for as much, um, it doesn't allow for as much yarn as when you wrap and pull. And so the stitches are naturally a lot tighter. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to tell here, but these two stitches that I did not wrapping are significantly tighter than the rest. And so if you work that tightly, the gauge on this project will be off. It will be too tight. Um, and it's, it's just a lot more difficult to work um, your next row into the preceding row when your stitches are so tight. So if you need to practice, just chain a few, you know, figure out how you like to hold your hook and um, kind of how you like the tension in your hands. Um, and just practice, practice chaining by yarning over. And just, just practice that for a little bit until it starts to feel a little bit more natural. And when you're feeling ready, go ahead and jump into the rest of the crochet along. All right, we are ready to get started on our chubby bunny pattern. This is a beginner pattern. It's pretty simple. We're going to work really slowly. Um, so it'll be easy to follow along. And we're going to learn some of the basic stitches used in Amigurumi as well as how to read patterns. So let's get started. So the very first thing we're going to do is a magic ring. In the pattern that is shown, that is abbreviated as MR, magic ring. So what you do, we're gonna walk through this really slowly and probably multiple times. And if you need to practice, totally okay. Honestly, recommended. I had to practice a lot when I was getting started. So you're going to hold the yarn end across these three fingers. You're going to kind of lock it in place with your thumb. Then you're going to wrap it around the back side of your fingers and then cross over the front and around to the back again. So what that does is that gives you an X here on the front side of your palm and on the back, you're going to have two parallel lines. So I'll do that one more time. You're just holding it here, anchor it, wrap around, cross in the front, wrap around, and then I like to hold it in place here with on that same finger with the thumb. So you have the crisscross in the front and the parallel lines in the back. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take your eight millimeter hook. You're going to put it so that the, the hook portion is down and you're going to insert it underneath the first one and you're going to grab the second one and you're going, you're holding these two yarns kind of loosely because they're going to need to move. So you're going to pull it under like this. At this point, you turn towards yourself. Once again, you know, letting, letting this yarn move, which is the yarn that's connected to the, the yarn ball. And then that same yarn that I was just touching this one here, you're going to take your hook and insert it underneath it. Then you're going to grab that yarn and pull it through the loop that you have on the hook. And that is how you do a magic loop or a magic ring. It has a couple of different names, but I, I tend to use magic ring. So there you have it. Like I said, if you need to practice, go ahead and practice. It might take a little bit of time. You can watch that segment over and over again. That is the beauty of video. You can stop, rewind, and 
watch it again. So the next thing we're going to do is single crochet eight. And so what that looks like on a magic loop is that you're going to insert the neat, the hook through the loop, yarn over like so. Then you're going to yarn over again and pull through. And that creates your very first stitch or your very first single crochet. So that was one. So we're going to do two, then three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So if while you were doing that, you started to run out of yarn tail here, all you have to do is just kind of pull on it a little bit. It will start to cinch up the ring and it will give you more room to crochet. As is, I was able to get my eight single crochets on there just fine. And so to finish up row one, we're just going to take this yarn end and we're gonna give it a nice pull and it's going to form a circle. So before you start on row two, you need to have a row marker. Now some people use, they have little kind of trinkets almost that you use as a, as a row marker. I just use a, a lighter piece of yarn, uh, lighter not meaning color, but being size, so it's thinner. Um, usually of a contrasting color so it's easier to see and I just put it right at the end of the row so I know where I'm going. And in my projects, I tend to work in a spiral, which means right now we have a perfect circle and I'm going to just start into the next one and we're just gonna keep going around and around and around. So row two is going to be increase times eight. So what that means is that an increasing stitch is where you put two single crochets into each preceding stitch. Now one thing that is a little bit tricky about working with chenille style yarn, which is what this is, is that you kind of lose where your stitches are. They're a little bit difficult to see. And so what I tend to do is I tend to feel for them. I use my, my thumb and my middle finger and I kind of feel for it. So each stitch, has a front and a back, and so it makes a V. I'm gonna actually pull up another project really quick so it's a little bit easier to see with this different style of yarn. All right, so this is a completely different project that I'm working on, um, and it's a, a wool yarn roving. Anyway, that's details are probably not that important, but you can see that each, um, each stitch has it makes sort of a V. So you have a front loop and a back loop. And in Amigurumi, we typically work through both. There are some types of projects that you'll only work through one, but mostly Amigurumi, we're going to work through both. So we're going to insert our hook underneath both of those. And, and that's going to make for a, a tighter weave in our projects or a tighter stitch. Gauge actually is the right term, tighter gauge. So that's what we're doing here is we're right now we're trying to find those and with the chenille style yarn that sort of fuzzy yarn it makes it harder to see so let me put my row marker back so what you're going to do is you're just going to feel for those um, those stitches and when you feel both loops, you're going to insert your hook underneath both of them. You're gonna yarn over, pull through, and yarn over and pull through. So that's one, so that's a single crochet. So an increasing stitch, we're going to do that one more time in the same stitch. So now where we had one crochet stitch, we have two. So it's pretty basic math. So we're going to do that all the way around in each of the eight 
existing stitches that we have from row one, we're going to work two stitches. And this number here at the end in parentheses is the number of stitches that we'll have at the end of each row. And if this is your first amigurumi, or if you'd still consider yourself maybe a beginner, it's a good idea to, at the end of each row, count your stitches. Um, when I was first starting, I got off so easily. Um, I would just lose count and, um, and it can really throw off your work if you, um, if you don't have the right number of stitches. So I'm going to count my stitches at the end of this row because I've been talking and I can't always talk and crochet accurately at the same time. So that should be 16 stitches. So once again, like I said, I, I feel for the stitches to see where they are. So I've got one here, one, oops, I usually count with this hand, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, so I have the right stitch count, so we're good to move on to row three. All right, so row three, we're going to single crochet, then increase. And we will repeat that where we single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, eight times. So that at the end of the row, we will have 24 stitches. So, uh, and I didn't actually talk about this, but this was something I did at the end of row two. I took the the yarn that I'm using as my row marker and I just flipped it over. So now it's on the back side. And then at the end of the next row, I'll flip it forward. So it's just kind of woven gently throughout the project. That way I can see where I started and where I'm ending and I can pull it out really easily when I'm done. So the first stitch we're going to do is a single crochet. Then the second is going to be an increasing stitch. So that's a single crochet and then a second single crochet in that same stitch. Then again, single crochet, increase. single crochet and then increase. So we put one and two in the same stitch. So the beginning of this pattern works on a multiple of eight. So the very first row we did was magic ring, single crochet eight. The second row was increase times eight. And then this row is single crochet increase times eight. So each row we are um, adding eight more stitches. And what this does is it just allows it to grow outward uniformly. So we keep a nice circle shape to it. All right, and single crochet and increase that last Time. So that should be eight. And now I'm going to take the yarn tail and flip it forward on my running stitch marker. Once again, I started talking during that. So I'm going to count my stitches because sometimes talking throws me off. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Awesome. We are good to go on to row four. So on row four, we're switching up how the, the multiplier, you know, the first three we were doing in increments of eight and this one we're doing in an increment of six. And so what that does was the eight, with the eight, we were growing steadily outward. With the six, we are going to still grow outward, but it's also going to, to start shaping it a little bit more instead of being flat. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to single crochet. That's what the SC stands for, single crochet. One, 
two, three, and then we're going to do an increasing stitch. So put two stitches in the same one, then repeat one, two, three, and increase. Uh, I'm still using my middle finger and my thumb to, to find the stitch and then I crochet underneath it. So that's just how I um, tend to do it and it re works really well for me. All right, so now we're to an increase. One. Two, three, increase, one, two, three, and increase, and one, two, whoops. three, increase. So one thing that can be a major tip on whether you, you have the right number of rows or not is if you end on the right stitch. So like on this one, we're supposed to end on an increase and I did. So that gives me more confidence that I have my correct number of stitches where if I had ended on a single crochet, I would know that somewhere in the pattern I had messed up and I'd probably need to tear out the row and start again. All right, so row five, we're working with a multiplier of three. So this is kind of basic math, um, but to be perfectly honest, there are a lot of times when I'm writing a pattern that I sit there and think like, man, how does this math work? Um, but that's what I get for trying to watch movies and crochet at the same time. So on to row five, we're going to single crochet nine. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we're going to do an increasing stitch. So increase, and we'll repeat that two more times. So one, two, three, four, five, oops, I'm going too fast. Five, really too fast. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and increase. And then the last one. So you can see that the crocheting is starting to take a little bit of shape it's starting to kind of pucker its way upward toward my fingers. Um, I think just the way I tend to hold my crocheting makes it want to be inside out, um, but we are not going to let it. So what we're going to do, when we get to the end of this row, where we should have 33 stitches, is you can see if I just set, set it down, it kind of wants to, it wants to bow this way, but this is the inside. And so we need to force it this way so that the nicer side of the stitches is on the outside. For row six, we are once again working on that multiplier of three. So we're adding three stitches to the overall row. So at the end, we're going to have 36 stitches. 
So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then increase. So we've got one and two stitches in that, and we'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then increase. So one and two. Then our last ten single crochets. One, two, three, my yarn tail's getting in the way. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then increase. Gotta pull out some more yarn. All right, so the end of that row, we should have 36. So you can see a little bit where the increases are because you tend to get little peaks. So you can see there was an increase there, an increase there, and an increase here. <coughs> And that is a big part of shaping amigurumi is where the increases and the decreases are. All right, so now we are ready to move on to row seven. So here in row seven, we're going to do something different. We're going to do our very first decreasing stitch. And also we're broken, I've broken up the the single crochets differently. So up to this point, if we go back to row six, in all of the rows, we've had a solid number of single crochets, then an increase. Whereas on he here on row seven, we're going to do single crochet five decrease and then single crochet five times three for a total of 33 stitches. <clears throat> so what that looks like, so it's gonna look like this. So we're going to do sing five single crochets, easy, breezy, beautiful, right? We're getting so good at this. So one, two, three, four, five. Now what is a decrease? So in Amigurumi, we tend to use an invisible decrease. And since it's gonna be easier to show you on that project I had out earlier, I'm going to pull it up. We're swapping out projects here for a second, just so I can show, show you guys what um, a decrease looks like. So here, um, an invisible decrease, we work through the front of both loops of the next two stitches, and then we're going to crochet them together in a sense. So you insert your hook under that first the first loop, so not the back loop, just the first one, and then under the first loop of the next one. So you have three loops on your hook. Then what you're going to do is you're going to yarn over, and you're going to pull the yarn through those two loops as though they were just one. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through the next two loops on your hook. And so what that does is it collapses two stitches into one and then you just continue working through the next stitch, the number of single crochets that you would be wanting to do. So I'm gonna pull those out because that is not actually the pattern for this project that I'm working on. But that is, that is the theory of what we're going to be doing. And I wanna show you on, um, on that type of yarn because it's a little bit easier to see. So here we are 
we're going to be working underneath the first loop of the next stitch. So you can see it's coming through right there. And then, and sometimes I turn my hook like this and use the, you know, the pointy part of the hook and I kind of grab it like that so that it's, it's a little bit easier to get a hold of. So we've got our two loops there. We're gonna yarn over and pull through both of those and yarn over and pull through the last two. Then we're going to single crochet five. One, two, three, four, five, oops, five. And then we begin the pattern all over again. So we're single crocheting five again. So in actuality, what's happening is that we're, we're single crocheting 10 together, um, but the pattern is broken up so that the decreases are in a very strategic spot. So this is four and then five of the second round of this. So now we're going to decrease. So you saw what I did there. I, I once again use these fingers to kind of find the front loop. Usually I'm trying to find, you know, both loops. This time I'm looking for the front loop. So I'm looking for the front loop and sometimes I lift it up just a little bit so that it's easier for my hook to go under. You can do the same thing on the next one. Lift it up just a smidge. So you have both of those front loops on your hook. You're going to wrap the yarn around, pull through those two, and then wrap the yarn around and pull through the next two. And then single crochet five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to begin our last round where we single crochet five. One, two, three, four, five, invisible decrease and one more time. So grab that front loop, grab the next front loop and work your needle underneath it. Sorry, your hook. This is not knitting, this is crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over again, pull through two. And then we're going to end by single, single crocheting five. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, so we're on to row eight. So you can see our bunny is starting to take shape a little bit. If I set it down, you can start to see just a wee bit that where we did those decreases versus our increases, we're starting to get a little bit of shaping here, you know? So this is the, the finished bunny. And you start to kind of see where maybe the eyes would sit and where you get the little dimple in the chin. So row nine, and I'm running out of my running stitch marker length, so I'm just gonna pull that onto a little bit, flip it over there. So we're going to single crochet nine, then decrease. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then decrease. We'll work it slow again so that you guys can see what we're doing. I'm gonna grab the front loop, insert it underneath, front loop of the next one, insert it underneath, yarn over and pull through those two, yarn over and pull through two again. 
and single crochet nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and decrease. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now the last two stitches we decrease. So we're getting more and more shape as we're starting to remove stitches from the rows. We're starting to get that um, head shape for our bunny. So row nine, we're doing a lot of decreasing here. So what we're essentially doing is by single crochet decrease times 10, we're removing 10 stitches out of the pattern. So this is going to be a very good time to practice those decreases. So single crochet, which you're awesome at by this point, then decrease, work the stitch through those first two loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, single crochet, decrease, single crochet, and decrease. And we're just going to keep doing that all the way around on this one. And what this sort of dramatic um, removal of stitches does is it really defines, or it starts to define the end of the head and the beginning of the body. So we're just gonna keep working around single crochet and decrease and single crochet and decrease to the end of this row. We have just one last single crochet and one last decrease. Phew! So if you take a look at it now, removing all those stitches really kind of brought it up closer together than it was before, kind of like the top of a bowl. So that's, you can see that we've got, you know, maybe the front of the head here coming down into the back of the head or neck area, and then next we're going to be starting on the body. So row 10, the last thing we're going to do in the head, and this is what really defines the separation of the, the head and the body. So if you look here on this, our finished bunny, you can see there's a row right here that, that really accentuates where the, the shaping is. And that is achieved by a slip stitch. So that's something we haven't yet done, but it's pretty simple. So a slip stitch looks like this. You're going to insert your hook underneath your stitch, yarn over, just like you're going to do a normal single crochet. But at this point in a normal single crochet, you yarn over again and then pull through, 
but you're not going to do that. You're just going to pull right through. So that's a slip stitch. So you insert, yarn over, and pull right through. Insert, yarn over, pull through. Insert, yarn over, pull through. And you can feel like if you kind of tug on your crocheting a little bit, there's some, some give and take, there's some stretch in, in these rows of single crocheting. But if you pull on these, these slip stitches, they're really, really strong. And so that's a big part of what defines the, the end of the head and the beginning of the neck, or sorry, the beginning of the body. So you're just going to work around this whole row, just slip stitching so that you get that definition. I have no idea which number we're on. The nice thing about a row that's just, you know, all slip stitches or all single crochets is you don't have to count because if you got the row before it right, then you're just fine. So we're just to the end here. We just slip stitch 20. And you can feel on your project that it, it is tighter, it's stronger than the other than the other stitches. So next what we're going to be starting is the beginning of the body. Alrighty, so on row 11 we're working in a multiple of five, which means we're adding five stitches to the pattern. So we're back to increasing, back to building up the number of stitches we have. So you're going to single crochet three, one, two, three, and then increase. Put those two stitches in there. I've got a knot in my yarn. There we go. So we'll do it again. One, two, three, and then increase. And you might notice as you're going around doing this that the slip stitching rows, not only are they stronger, but they also tend to be a little bit tighter. And so it can be sometimes difficult to work your hook underneath them. Um, and if you have to, you absolutely can you know, tear out that row and um, slip stitch a little bit looser. Mine don't seem to be a problem, but, but I do feel a difference when I'm working underneath them than, um, than sort of the looseness that comes with a single crochet. So one, oops, one, two, three, and increase. So that brings us to the end of row 11. And you can see a little bit already that that slip stitch row definitely has made um, some definition for us. So row 12, we're going to learn another new stitch. When you look at this, it might seem a little bit overwhelming, but just take it in chunks. The very first thing, single crochet 14. We can do that. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. 
Next stitch, bobble, represented by B-O. Not body odor, bobble. So what is a bobble stitch? It is a series of half double crochets crocheted together, which sounds a little bit overwhelming since we haven't learned half double crochet yet. So we're gonna take it nice, nice, nice and slow. So the first thing you do is you, you take your hook and you're going to wrap it around the yarn like this. Or some people tend, like to hold their hook still and wrap the yarn around their hook. Either way, it just needs to be wrapped so that our hook holds a strand of yarn. And then we're going to insert it into the next stitch. Then like we're used to by now, we're gonna yarn over and pull through. So now we have three loops on the hook. We typically have two when we're working on something. And for the bobble stitch, we're going to yarn over and we're going to pull through those first two. And then instead of yarning over and pulling through these two again, we're going to yarn over, but we're going to insert it into that same stitch that we worked into. So we're going to insert, yarn over, and pull through. Now we have four loops on our hook because we're, we had two to start with this time because we're gathering them. We're gonna yarn over and pull through the first two. So now we have three loops on the hook. So now we have two of these sort of half double crochets. And we're going to do this five times. So we're gonna, so this will be number three, yarn over, insert, and sometimes it, you start to a little bit like lose the stitch, so you have to feel for it again with your, with your fingers. Insert, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through the first two. So that's our third one. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, yarn over those first, yarn over and pull through the first two. So now we have one left to do. So we've just been gathering all of these stitches on our hook. Yarn over, insert into the same stitch. Yarn over again, pull it through. Yarn over and pull through those first two stitches. Now we have all of these stitches that we've gathered and we've made five um, half double crochets for our bobble stitch. And now we're just gonna yarn over and instead of inserting again, we're going to pull through all of those loops on the hook, which can sometimes be a little tricky. Now, at least from my crocheting, it tends to want to poke so that the, um, so that the round portion of the bobble is on the inside. And we don't want that to happen. So we're going to use our fingers and we're just going to force it right to the outside. And so that makes our foot. So when we're all done, that's going to look like, like these little feet here. That's the bobble stitch. So now, even though we did all of those stitches, really what we have is one stitch because we, we gathered them all together and that's the only stitch that we'll be crocheting into on the next round. It's this little one right here. So what we do now, and, and this is important to remember, is that because this is so much bigger than you know one normal stitch, sometimes it will crowd out and it will cover the next one. So you think, okay, next I need to single crochet six and you'd start here when really we need to start right here. So sometimes you have to kind of squish the, the bobble stitch back a little bit so you can find your next stitch. So next we're single crocheting six. And this is another thing that helps me. I kind of pull the, the bobble stitch back so I can work into the next one. Because it, it can be a little bit challenging um, working around a bobble stitch. And also, 
they tend to that first one right after tends to be super loose and so I just give my my yarn a little bit of a tug and cinch it down tighter so I don't have that great big gap so that was so now we're on to our single crochet six so that was the first one and now we're going to single crochet five more so one two three four five for a total of six and then we're going to do a bobble stitch one more time so let's begin yarn over insert into the stitch yarn over and pull through yarn over pull through the first two stitches repeat yarn over insert into the stitch yarn over pull through yarn over first two and yarn over and pull through the first two and we just keep doing that and it's also going to feel maybe a little bit crowded on your hook and like you're kind of fighting to get them on there but it's worth it with those cute little feet so I've got one more to do yarn over pull through the first two and then yarn over and pull through all of the loops on the hook it's going to want to go to the inside but we're going to push it so it's on the outside and pull it off to the side so we don't lose our stitches here and then single crochet into the next one and if you need to give it a little bit of a pull so that it tightens up and then single crochet our last stitches so I just did those last three single crochets so what we have here is this is our head it's completely well it's pretty much completely round at the moment um, when we get in and do a little bit of head shaping um, it will it'll look pretty different but now we have our cute little front feet So row 13 is nice and simple. One of those we love to have because we don't have to count at the end. Single crochet 25. So we're just going to work in each of the stitches all the way around one single crochet. And when we get to the bobble stitches, which are coming up here quick, we just crochet, see this is the stitch right before the bobble stitch. And the bobble stitch we have, if you kind of pull it, you can see we have this stitch here, which is the bobble stitch stitch. And then we have this one, which was the next one. And you just single crochet into one and single crochet into the next one and that helps kind of finalize the the look of the foot because it helps to separate it from the rest of the body and our last stitch so now they really are starting to look like feet so row 14 is another easy one we're just going to single crochet 25 again it's on these rows when it's you know easy to listen to an audiobook or watch a movie or talk to someone on the phone so it's a lot easier than uh, the rows where you're decreasing or increasing or you're doing a bobble stitch
These are by far my favorite rows. I like things that are whew, easy and don't take a whole lot of brain power. But if everything was always just a you know single crochet 25 row, we would just have a tube. We would not have a cute rabbit. So I guess there is a purpose to the more challenging rows. <coughs> All right, so that's the end of row 14. Row 15, we're doing something a little bit different than we have before. And like I said, you know, it, it can be overwhelming when you see a pattern that set has kind of a longer list of things that you need to do or instructions. And so the best thing to do is just break it down bit by bit. Don't get overwhelmed. Look at the first part, do that, move to the second part and so on and so forth. So for row 15, we're increasing single crocheting four and we're doing that three times. We can handle that. So our very first stitch is going to be an increase. So we're going to put in two single crochets in that very first stitch. And we're going to single crochet four. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to increase again. We've got two stitches there. And then single crochet one, two, three, four. And for the last time, we're going to do that. So we're going to increase. One, two, three. I'm running out of yarn. There we go. Four. And then that's the end of our three. So now we're going to single crochet ten. So one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So why, why did I do that? When I was designing this pattern, why did I decide to put increases on the top and not on the bottom? Well, the reason is I wanted to give some shape to the back. I wanted to it you know, to not just be long and simple. I wanted it to, to have some of that arch like a rabbit's um, back does, but I didn't want there to be really any arch to the stomach because if there was, then the feet wouldn't sit on the ground. Um, this, the stomach would sit on the ground and the feet would be in the air. So I wanted to keep this, you know, the single crochet 10, that kind of allows it to stay nice and flat with the increasing being on the top rows. So now we're going on to row 16. All right, it's a party row. I mean, we're all just hanging out here, so I guess it's not really too big of a party, but I mean, crochet parties are fabulous. So let's see, we're just gonna crochet, single crochet 28. My favorite thing about crochet parties is that there's usually some sort of delectable snack. I've not been to a crochet party since college, so <sighs> I'm missing out on good snacks. I just know it. I hope you have some. I hope wherever you are making this that you have a delicious snack and something tasty to drink. What I need is a drink of water because I talk way too much when I do these tutorials. But I feel like if I wasn't talking, it would be really boring to just watch my hands. So we're just about to finish up our single crochet row. <clears throat> I 
All right, and we've got three left. One, two, three. And we're done with row 16. Now we're on to row 17. This is where we're going to put the back legs. So once again, breaking it up, we're just looking at the very first part, single crochet, 17. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. Next stitch we're going to do is the bobble stitch. So remember how that goes, we yarn over, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. And we repeat that for a total of five times. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, All right, and pull through two. <clears throat> then the last thing we're gonna do, yarn over and pull through all of the loops on the hook. Force the bobble stitch to the outside. And then pull it back a little bit so we make sure we can see our next stitch. And we're going to single crochet six. So one, and if you need to pull it tight, go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm, someone has a typo. That would be me. The next thing we're supposed to do is bobble stitch, then single crochet three. I'll fix that in the editing. So for the bobble stitch, yarn over, insert, yarn over and pull through two. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we've done it a total of five times. Yarn over and pull through all of those. Force the bobble to the outside and then single crochet three. One, two, and three. And flip your row marker to the front. Row 18 is pretty simple for you by now, I'm sure. We're going to single crochet five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to decrease. So working through the front loops of the next two stitches, yarn over and pull through both. Yarn over and pull through two. Then again, one, two, three, four, five, and decrease. So working under the, the front of those next two stitches, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through. One, two, 
three, four, five, and decrease. One, two, three, four, five, and decrease. So now we have 24 stitches. So that's starting to shape um, kind of the back side of our rabbit. So the next thing we need to do is start stuffing. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our nylon and we're just going to stuff some fiber fill right into the end of the toe. So I have already used one leg of this nylon. So it looks like it's, well, one leg is chopped off because I've already used it for a different project. So I'm just gonna bring it all the way down here. I'm gonna grab some fiber fill and just kind of put it in there for now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're gonna stuff it into the head. Now that fiber fill that I put in there was not enough to completely stuff it. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do, is I just like to kind of fold the nylon around like this. And then I'm gonna really pack the head full of fiber fill. And it's gonna take probably more than you think. And one thing that is important is to, to kind of use your fingers down in here to, to rake it like this. Like, uh, it's a little bit difficult to see, but you kind of use your fingers to break it up and pull it to the outside edges of the head. Because if you, if like we stop right now and we take a look at this head, it's really weirdly shapen because um, it's not properly filled with fiber fill and the fiber fill is not pushed to the, to all of the extreme edges. It's mostly sitting in the middle. So it's really not filled out very well. So you're just going to keep putting more and more in there then making sure that it's brought to the edges. And it's always a good idea to, to kind of stop and evaluate, to take a look and you know, I think it looks like I could use a little bit more stuffing kind of in that spot. So I'm just gonna you know, use my fingers to push it into that spot specifically. There we go, and that feels a little bit better. And you can kind of shape it with your hands on the outside and say, all right, that, I think that's starting to look pretty good. And next we're going to start stuffing into the body. So the body takes also quite a bit of fiber fill. So you're just gonna take a whole bunch and just shove it in there. Then once again, once you kind of get some established, you're going to make sure that you, you work it you know, not just down, but also to the sides. And it doesn't have to be, the body doesn't have to be perfectly stuffed at this point. You want the head to be just as stuffed as it's ever going to be. Um, but the body doesn't have to be perfect quite yet because we have a couple of more rows. So this is where I'm going to stop for now on the body. And we're going to continue on to the next row. So I'll insert my hook again, pull that tight and we're ready to start on row 19 where we're going to single crochet one and then decrease so work through the front loop and the front loop yarn over pull through both and yarn over pull through so we're going to do that where we single crochet one and then decrease eight times. So at the end of the row, we're going to have 16 stitches. So that's closing this up pretty quickly. So after this row, we might add a little bit more stuffing. Um, and then after the, 
the next row we will kind of add the very last bit of stuffing that we need. Now we're coming around our legs. single crochet and decrease all right and this is our last single crochet and decrease there we go so like I said you can see that one that row really kind of started to, to decrease the number of stitches we have and give a little bit more shape to the, the end of the body. So we are going to take this moment to add some more fiber fill. And the nylon does tend to get twisted while we're working because we work in a spiral. And so it gets a little bit twisted. All right, pack some more in, push it out to the sides. Fiber fill has a, plays a big role in the shape of your finished object. And if it is understuffed or if it's stuffed um, maybe only in one direction, like down rather than out, um, it, things can look a little bit funky. I know it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing here, the nylon, nylon is kind of all gathered right up around here, but just put more in, get nice and full. Take a moment to stop and like squeeze it. And if it feels like it's about the same toughness as the head, I could use a little bit more. Mine's not quite as tough. That's when you know that you're that you've got it filled is when there's a, a consistency of um, pliability, malleability, when it's stuffed to the same amount. <laughs> All right, that feels better to me. <clears throat> so now we'll continue on to our next row. Just have to find my yarn end there. All right, so now we're ready for row 20. So we're going to single crochet two. So we've got one and two. And then we're going to decrease. Working through those two front loops to collapse two stitches into one. And we'll do that three more times. One and two. And decrease. a little bit harder when you're trying to film what you're doing. Normally I wouldn't hold my project on its head like this. But I need, I want to be able to show you guys what I'm doing so it's a little bit more difficult but it's still turning out well so that's good. All right so at this point if you want to add more fiber fill you know, if you feel it and it feels like you should probably add a little bit more, go ahead. I think I might just put a tiny bit in that last row we just made. The rest of it's feeling pretty good. And also on this project, like if you wanted to use a knee high instead of a full on nylon, that would be perfectly fine. Some of my projects 
use almost the entire nylon because they're so big, but this one's a kind of a smaller one. Actually, my smallest one to date, besides the Niffler, which happens to be sitting right here. Um, it's my smallest one that I use the big chunky yarn on. Anyhow, so that's feeling really good. So we're going to do our last row, which is decrease times six. So each one of these stitches is going to be a decrease. So you're going to work through this first or the first two stitch, the first two loops of the stitches all the way around. And this is going to pretty close to completely close our project. I think we've got two more. And this is the very last one. There we go. So at this point, we're going to cut about five inches of a yarn tail, and we're just going to pull it through. That's called tying it off. And with our scissors, we're also going to cut about an inch of our nylon, like so. What I like to do is I like to take, kind of pull the nylon to the edges like this, and then just do a, just a standard under over knot. like that. And if you want to, you can triple knot it just to be safe. I tend to maybe play a little too safe <laughs> and then just kind of tuck the ends into the body just like that. And then you're going to, well, first we're going to take out our running stitch marker. Just pull it out like that. And that part's done. Then we're going to take our hook and we're going to insert it under kind of the front loop and we're going to pull, pull it through and we're going to do that all the way around. So right in that front loop. And this is just gathering our last six stitches. And when you've done that, you're going to go ahead and you're just going to pull it tight like that. And it just cinches right up, almost completely disappears. And then you're going to knot it off and you can tie a knot kind of however you would like. I, I like to insert my hook underneath just a random stitch and pull it through like this, leaving a bit of a loop. Then I insert my hook through that loop and I pull this through and I pull that tight and then I just bring this one through that loop I just made. I don't know. I, I have a hard time explaining that part. Um, I don't know that it makes a whole lot of sense, but you just knot it off and then you're going to grab the yarn tail and you're just going to weave it into the project. So at this point, mine's maybe a little bit excessively long, so I'm just going to trim it and finish hiding it in the project. I'm trying to leave it there. There we go. So there we have it. This is what our bunny looks like at this point. Next, we're going to be um, making the eyes, the ears, and the tail.